Uh, we gear up, we put our harness on uh, for um, fall protection. City electrician Aaron Gambala straps himself into a truck that lifts him up to a streetlight in San Diego's Bay Terraces neighborhood. A resident reported the streetlight broken, but when he runs a quick test on it, so it works. The light turns on. You know what? Go ahead and change it. Go ahead and change it? Okay. Gambala's supervisor, Derek Mack, says the light is probably on its last leg and is still worth replacing with a newer, more energy efficient LED light. This light was reported out just under a year ago, and that's a typical wait time for a city that has about 70,000 street lights and only eight electricians to maintain them. Right now, we'll function on probably uh, half the crew that we would normally have. Mac oversees the city's streetlight repair division. More than 5,000 streetlights are reported broken in San Diego. We've been asked to do more with less, and it's nobody's fault. It's just that it's just what we have to deal with right now. Mac says the slow pace of repair is partly due to supply chain delays. It can take 8 to 12 weeks just to get materials. An even bigger issue is staffing. Electricians can typically make more money working in the private sector. But on the flip side of that, the city is a, it's a great place to work for because you have uh, your salary is guaranteed. You know, you don't have to worry about uh, getting sent home because it's raining or whatever. You have, you have your job here. You have your job security here. So each one of these dots on this particular map represents a report that's coming about a streetlight that's been out. Kirby Brady is the city's chief innovation officer and head of the performance and analytics department. She's showing me a phone app her department is developing for the streetlight repair team. Again, this is more of an efficiency tool for them so that they understand where they're at in relationship to all of the surrounding work orders. It could take years for San Diego to fill all of its vacant electrician jobs. In the meantime, Brady is tasked with helping the existing staff be more efficient. She developed an algorithm that helps the team decide which streetlight repairs are the most urgent. With the streetlight, we can tell how close it is to a school, how close it might be to a park. Of course, these things are important for safety. We want safe routes for people to walk or bike or drive. We also know things about traffic density. So if a particular streetlight is located in an area where there are high volume traffic collisions, that should factor into sort of the urgency of the repair. The system also identifies clusters of repairs, so the crews can spend less time driving across the city to the next job. Brady admits data alone won't fix the backlog of broken streetlights, but drawing attention to how big the problem is could convince city officials, even voters, to put more money towards fixing it. In any given year, the city never has enough money to throw at all of the departments to fix things, but our hope is that by spotlighting some of the most frequently requested services by residents, we can start to funnel resources there and improve those service levels over time. Another selling point for the app, it appears to be improving employee morale. Derek Mack, the supervising electrician, says repair crews now feel like there's logic behind their assignments. Well, before that system came up, we was uh, jumping around. Whoever was making the most noise, that's where we was going, you know, and whatever um, upper management centers but this system right here, I think, is a perfect system for us. Fixing a broken streetlight isn't always as simple as changing a light bulb. Sometimes the underground wiring is a century old and needs replacement, which can take weeks, if not months. In the meantime, the city plans on evaluating the success of its data-driven approach to streetlight repair later this year. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News.